next uh, speaker, um, I'd like to call on Ms. Yuna Liang. I hope I pronounced that properly. She would be discussing the remittance use cases. Um, I just want to check if she's here already. Yes, hi, Leah. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. So, um, you, I'd like to introduce you. Um, Ms. Yuna is a research coordinator for Innovations for Poverty Action, uh, same uh, organization, IPA Philippines. She previously worked in London for the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, or CIFF, in the monitoring and evaluation team. She holds an MSc in uh, International Development from the London School of Economics and Political Science. So welcome, Yuna, and thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Leah, um, and thank you again for inviting us to this event today. Um, and hi, everyone. Nice to e meet you. <laughs> um, so I will share my screen now. And if at any point, if you cannot hear me okay, please let me know because my internet connection is sometimes a bit uh, unstable. And okay, um, can you see my screen now? Sorry, can you see my screen? Ah, uh, yes, I can see your screen. Okay, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, so today I'm glad to be sharing with you um, the labeled remittances uh, study, which IPA has been implemented uh, since 2017. Um, it's led by two economists, um, Professor Dinya from the University of Michigan and Professor Giuseppe from Sapienza University of Rome. Um, this is a proof of proof of concept research where we tested um, a product for OFW to label their remittances as for um, specific uses. Um, and as Nash said earlier, um, we cannot rely on our, uh, hopes and instincts um, to know what works. We need to test. Um, and I hope that this study serves as a, a good example of um, testing uh, an innovation or a product. Okay, so I will start. Um, so today I would um, show you, first of all, um, some background information of the study so that you know like, why we conducted, conducted this study and why we think it's important. Um, and then I will show you the research design, the intervention design, and also lastly, the preliminary results um, from the data analysis. Um, so I'm not going to present it as it is a, an academic paper, so there will not be a lot of statistics. Um, I will just share more on the, like the ideas behind the project and also their product design. Okay, so first of all, why, why did we conduct this uh, study? Um, so I'm, I'm sure you all know very well um, the important role of remittances, um, especially in the development of, of the Philippines. And, and actually globally, um, remittances is one of the largest financial flow into low and middle, in, middle income countries. Um, for example, in 2019, um, the, the total amount of remittances going into low and middle income countries um, was about more than $500 billion. So it was actually even more than um, foreign aid. So given this huge magnitude, um, remittances actually have the, the potential to significantly impact a wide range of development outcomes. However, um, migrants, well, migrants usually prefer for the remittances to be spent on, um, on items that have longer term um, development impacts, such as um, investment in education or in household enterprises, um, because they are away, they are so far away from home, um, they have very little ability to, to monitor or to control how the remittances are actually being spent by the recipients. And in contrast, recipients usually prefer to spend the remittances on immediate consumption. And as a result, um, this may discourage migrants to send more of um, the money that they earn to home. So, so the question becomes, so how can OFWs better control the remittances that they are sending home? Um, and one study that was conducted by the same researchers who led this uh, label remittance study 
um, previously in Rome, um, offers some interesting insights to this question. So I will tell you more about this um, FUK study that was uh, done in Rome with OFW there. Um, so it was a, a lab in the field. It involves about 500 OFWs in Rome. And in that study, researchers tested two ways to help OFWs um, to have more control over the remittance use. Um, and we call them um, a hard mechanism and a soft mechanism. And by hard mechanism, we mean that um, the OFW, they were given um, the chance to use EduPay, which was a financial product um, by which they can send remittances directly to the schools um, which their children go to. Right. And the soft mechanism, is, it just means that um, the OFWs had the chance to label the remittances as for education purposes so that the recipients would know that the migrants want this money to be spent on, on education. Right. And then the researchers compare the differences in the migrants' remittance behavior um, between these two mechanisms. And very interestingly, they found that um, the OFWs were willing to send 15% more remittances if they were given the ability to label the remittances for education. So the soft mechanism um, could in increase remittance by 15%, um, while the hard mechanism actually had a similar effect. So um, it also increased remittances, but not much more if compared to the soft mechanism, right? So both mechanisms worked, but they, the effects were very similar. However, you can imagine, right, the EduPay product is more complex because to, in, to arrange international payments um, into different schools, um, that could be quite a costly and complicated process. Uh, while labeling is less costly, it's almost cost-free actually, um, it's simpler to implement and therefore it's more scalable. Um, so that is why we, after this actual study, the researchers decided to test the, the labeling uh, method further um, and in a larger scale in the real time, in the real world setting. Um, and that uh, led us to the, to the label unit study. And in the label remittance uh, study, we try to answer two key research questions. The first question is, will improving OFW's ability to channel their remittances toward their preferred users by labeling increase the volume of remittances that they send, right? If they can, they can label the remittance, will they send more money? And question two, what is the impact of labeling remittances on the beneficiary household expenditures in relation to the migrants' practices, right? So, so now the migrant labeled the remittance, but will the recipients actually adjust their behavior in spending the, the, the remittances so that it's more consistent with the migrants' preference? So in order to answer these two questions, um, we use a methodology called randomized control trial. So we recruited more than 4,000 OFWs in UAE into our study sample. And then we, we randomly assign half of, we assign them into two groups. And because it's random, um, they, these two groups are comparable um, in a series of baseline characteristics, such as um, the average income, um, education level, age, um, gender, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then one of the group um, received the intervention, so the, the labeling uh, feature, and the other group did not. So this other group served as the uh, control group. And then after the study period, which was uh, several months, we then compare the, if there's any differences in terms of remittance volume and household expenditures um, between these two groups. And because these two groups were comparable at baseline, so if we found any differences, right, at, at the end of the study, then we can attribute this difference to the effect of, of the intervention. 
And so, so the first step, how, how did we get to this more than 4,000 OFWs in our study? Um, so we conducted intercept point sampling in the streets um, and we interviewed charger in UAE. So we actually met this OFW um, face to face and we interviewed them at the baseline. Oh, it says that my connection is unstable. I hope you can still hear me. Um, and then when we interviewed them, we also collected uh, contact information of um, someone in the households that they related to, um, because we would need to conduct a phone survey with the household as well at the end line. And we eventually recruited 4,458 OFWs in our study, um, and more than 2,000 of their households also participated in the study. Um, okay, but then how, how do we make labeling happen? Um, you may think that um, the, the, the simplest way to, to make labeling happen may be that if, if all the remittance centers or all the banks, they can just add this labeling feature um, as, one, as part of the, the, their system um, so that when people send money, right, they can add the label to specify how the money should be spent that would be that would be great. That would be the, the, the best way to implement labeling. Um, however, that wasn't available. There wasn't an available option. And so what we did is we designed and developed a mobile application, Padala and app. So we call it Padala. Um, it's a remittance recording app. So there is no transaction happening in the app at all. It's just for, um, it's like bookkeeping. It's just for um, OFWs to keep records of their remittance transactions. And we asked all of the participants to use this app during the baseline. Um, and to show you more, a little bit more about the design of this app. Um, so as you can see um, in the app, the users can upload the receipts of their remittances. Um, and then they can enter information, including the recipient, the amount, and the date. Um, and if they form a habit of recording their remittances, um, they would then be able to keep track of like a list of their remittances sent to different recipients. And, and as you may remember earlier, I said that we split the participants into two groups, right? And then on, only half of them um, had access to labeling. And how, how do we make that happen? So actually, for those in the treatment group, um, they have one additional um, feature in their app, which is when they record the remittance, um, they can also add labels. Um, as you can see on this um, graph, um, here add labels and they can choose whatever label they want. Um, we have a list of predetermined labels, but they can also specify anything else they want. So it could be like education, rent, utility, or sometimes people say donation to a church, it can be anything else. Um, and they can specify an amount for that label. And then this label will be sent to the recipient via a free SMS in the Philippines. So here, um, on this picture, you will see um, an example of this standardized message. So say, for example, dear header or whoever the re recipient is, Yuna has sent you 20,000 peso um, on this date and 2,000 peso designated for education, right? So this label um, is basically a message that is then, that will then be delivered to the recipient via SMS. Um, and the migrant can also edit the content in this message as they see fit. Um, they also have the option to send this message in other apps. So only half of the respondents have this feature in the app and the other half did not and that's the control group. And then we ask all of our respondents to use this app for 30 weeks and that's what we call the follow-up period. Um, after which we conducted the N9 survey. Um, and, and just to summarize um, all the data sources that go into the, the, the analysis, 
Um, we had the baseline survey and, and the remittance data collected in Badala and the airline survey, um, this data from the OFW. And we also have the airline survey data from this OFW's family back home in the Philippines. Um, we also partner with one uh, major remittance center in UAE, uh, UAE Exchange, to obtain admin data of uh, remittance transactions. So we use all of this data um, to, to run analysis and to, and to evaluate whether or not labeling is actually uh, working. Okay, so, so here is the result, right? So first question, did labeling actually increase remittances? So we found that um, the ability to label remittances actually led only those migrants with low baseline level of remittance activity to increase their remittance levels. So for those who, um, like at baseline, send less uh, remittance than, than the median, than the medium level, um, there was a positive effect of labeling. Right? After having access, they then send more money. Um, but for those, but for the migrants who had higher remit uh, level, so they used to already send a lot of remittance. For them, there was no changes. So labeling did not really work on the second group. Um, we also found that income kind of plays a role as well. So migrants with relatively higher income, um, they experience significant um, increase in their remittance levels. Um, but um, this effect did not occur uh, on those who have lower income. So, so basically, it, the labeling function has some effects um, on some subgroups, um, but not if we look at the whole sample as a whole. Right. Second question: Did that then change the behavior of the house uh, of the recipients? And we found that labeling remittance does not actually lead to higher expenditures on users that migrants identify as priority items, um, which was consistent across the full sample and between subgroups. Um, and ultimately, um, even though we, we saw some positive impact on, on some categories, for example, medical expenses, but we didn't see that in other categories. And it's not clear to us why um, why this, uh, in terms of uh, effects, that is only mixed or weak evidence that labeling um, as implemented in this study led to actual changes in household expenditures. Yeah, and as a result, out that labeling did not have the intended effect on household expenditure. And then they may choose to reduce their remittance, meaning that the initially um, positive impact um, may then um, decline over, over time. Um, and, and the possibility of these declining effects um, suggests that um, it would be important to continue to monitor the remittances uh, over a longer time frame um, than what we did in this study. Um, in this study, what we did was a seven month follow up period. And lastly, I would just like to share with you um, some creative insights um, from, from some interviews that I actually I did <laughs> with our OFW participants in UAE. So this is the quote from one of um, our participants when we asked them what they think about Pada Lab. And she said, I have been in UAE for 14 years, but I never monitor how much I had been sending to my parents. Neither I nor my parents can tell how much I have sent home over the years. And now I think if I had been using Catalab all these years, I would know. And now I can also use the labels, such as how much for medicines, how much for food, so that I know how much we are spending on each category. Um, and this is, even though we've only conducted a small number of qualitative interviews, um, a common theme that come up in all of these interviews is that um, they really appreciate the remittance recording function of the app, um, which may suggest um, interest and demand for, 
for products that help OFW um, better keep track of their remittances um, and to help them um, better plan and track the uses of the remittances together with their families at home. Um, and I hope this insight might be um, <laughs> useful um, for those of you who are considering uh, your own in innovations. I think it would be very useful. Thank you, Ms. Yuna. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you have one last one. You have one last slide. Did you have one last um, slide? Yeah, I just want to say that we are also adding like a follow-up study um, using the same same sample to understand the risk coping role of remittance in amid the, the, the pandemic. Uh, yeah, and we hope to be able to share the results from this uh, new follow-up study also one day. <laughs> yes, we would look forward to that and. But the luck is really um, very interesting when we look at financial inclusion. Usually, we look at savings, payments, uh, especially 